Welcome to Land a House. This is the Lux Power 6K split phase AC inverter. It has the ability to produce 6,000 watts between the load one and load two. It can accept 8,000 watts of solar. You can hook it up to a generator, the grid, a battery, and to solar as well. So it is capable of doing all kinds of things. I'm gonna be using this inverter to power my workshop off-grid, but that's gonna be in a future video. In today's video, I just want to take an overview or a quick look at this inverter so we are familiar with it before I do the full install. So let's go ahead and take a moment to look at all the ins and outs of this inverter. First things first, the packaging of this inverter was really good. It came in a large box and had foam all the way around the inverter and there was zero damage, at least so far, that I can tell on this inverter. Now included in the package, there is a cable that is for parallel connection between inverters. This 6K inverter can be combined with an additional 6K inverter. So you'll have 12,000 watts of output and it's actually a, a better deal. It's cheaper than buying their, uh, the Lux Power 12K. Although the Lux Power 12K is a very nice inverter. Um, so that cable will allow you to connect two different inverters together. There is also a communications cable that will go from the inverter to the battery. Now the battery that I'm gonna be using already has a specific cable, and so I will be using that. But keep in mind that the Lux Power does come with an additional cable, so you can connect up to the battery system that you're using. Now there's a nice user manual that has some pretty good information in it. And also there is a Wi-Fi dongle, which will allow you to connect to your Wi-Fi and use the app to make changes or just see how the state of charge is on your battery. Now let's take a tour around this inverter. So starting up here at the top, you can see the Lux Power logo. Now Lux Power is the same as EG4, except Lux Power is the original company and uh, EG4 is uh, rebranded. So you've got a display here. Let's go ahead and remove this film. We'll be able to look at this display whenever we have this connected to the solar and the battery. Um, but you've got your return up, down, and enter. Now, if this is the same as the 12K, it's actually a touch screen and you rarely have to use these uh, buttons right here. So nice to have that touch screen. Now down here in the bottom is where we'll be accessing all of the connection spots for battery, communication cable, the solar, and the output to the uh, power up this building. Uh, we'll get to that here in just a moment. Moving over to this side, there are three cooling fans, as you can see right here, and that should allow this inverter to stay nice and cool. Now I'm gonna be installing this over here, and I should have somewhere around a foot of available air space on the side, and uh, that will give it enough room there. There is a handle on both sides where you can hold on to this and move it around. This black box down here is where you'll be attaching the Wi-Fi dongle. It's got a uh, little, looks like a HDMI port down there, and then also uh, you'll attach that using uh, some of the screws included with the uh, hardware package. Now over here is the sticker of information. Uh, I'll see if I can't get a, a better lit version of that. Here is your EPS output, which is your uh, a slow or emergency stop basically. You can turn that off right there. If you move over to this side on over here, you can see the input air where it will be pulling air in to cool this off. Moving down here, there's another handle, a little sticker for some warning information, and then down here is the power on and off switch, which will be used to turn the inverter on or off. On the back, there is a bracket up top and a bracket down below for mounting this. Might be a little bit on the awkward side getting this up, but I will see what I can do. Possibly be able to just put a single easy to put in screw and then put a better lag bolt in and reverse that. It's not quite as intuitive as other inverters that I've seen. All right, well, that's what it looks like here from the uh, outside. Let's go ahead and open this up and see what kind of uh, ports we can get into on the inside. The bottom of the inverter has some knockouts so you can put your cables into. So here is the PV knockout. You've got your generator and grid. There's load, battery input, and communications. So I'll be uh, able to knock out the ones that I need whenever I go to install that over here on top of my battery. 
Now getting into the lower part of the inverter to access all of the connection points, you have to unscrew seven different screws to open up this uh, down here. On the Lux Power 12K, there is just a couple of snaps on the side and it makes accessing this so much easier. So uh, definitely not as convenient as that bigger inverter, but hopefully this is one of those things once everything has been uh, uh, connected. I don't have to get in here and change anything. So we'll go ahead and get these unscrewed real quick. I'm going to remove this cover so we can see what's inside. Let's take a look at all of our connection points here. So starting down on this side is the PE or earth ground. So that bus bar will have all of your grounds. Over here on this one is the neutral. All of your white wires will go to that. Over here, we've got the solar input. So this is your PV1 positive, PV1 negative, PV2 positive, and PV1 negative. So those each have a 25 amp input and can do, I think, 480 volts input, which is nice and high. So this one right here is your generator input. So you've got uh, gen line one, gen line two. Over here is the grid, so you can have grid and grid two. And over here is your load, so the output. So you've got uh, load one and load two. So in my install, I'll be using a PV1 input, the earth ground, the neutral, and then the load over here. I won't be using the grid or the generator. And if I move over here, you've got your battery negative and battery positive. We'll definitely be using those. Now, if you'll notice here, it's got a screw terminal that is designed to be used with uh, an eyelet. And I think what I'm gonna be doing is installing a mechanical lug in here so my cables can just be slipped up in here and uh, tightened down and it should work just fine. Now, if I move over here, you've got different connections. Uh, for instance, generator start or generator communication. And then you've got some uh, other stuff in there that I won't be using. Now over here, you can parallel inverters, and that would allow you to use more than one inverter. And then over here, we will be using this port. This is the battery communication port right over here. Now that you've seen the inverter, I'm gonna read off a few of the tech specs here. And then in a future video, you'll get to see me install this with a battery and power my workshop off grid. All right, so this is the model number SNB-NB-US6000. Has a maximum PV input or solar input of 8,000 watts, and that's 4,000 per string with 25 amps. What was it, 480 uh, volts input? So the rated PV input is 320 volts, so that's the ideal that you would aim for, uh, but it will accept 100 volts up to 480, but the MPPT voltage range is 120 volts to 385. So if you can keep your solar input voltage between 120 volts and 385, you'll be in a pretty sweet range there, so keep that in mind. I think the solar that I'm gonna have coming in here is gonna be somewhere around 250 volts, and that should do quite well. The max solar current for this inverter is 17 amps on both PV1 and PV2, but it has a short circuit of 25 amps on that PV. Now this 6,000 watt inverter is a split phase, so you can either use one leg and the neutral with a ground, and that will give you 120 volts at 3,000 watts, or you can use both sides of the load and get 6,000 watts, and that will provide the most power at uh, 240 volt output. Now there is a surge power on this inverter, which is two times the rated power. So if you're using one leg of the power at 3000 watts, you have times two, and that's times five seconds. Now if you go above that five seconds, it will trigger the inverter and it will shut down. The inverter does weigh 52 pounds, so make sure you have somebody helping you whenever you mount this on the wall. And the last thing is that this uses less than 60 watts for idle consumption. Whenever you have no loads going on in your application and you just have the inverter running, it will use 60 watts or less, which is very nice to see on an inverter of this size. And that's the first look of the Lux Power 6000 watt inverter. I will do a full install of this and have a video on the channel very soon. Now, if you want to look at purchasing this inverter, I will have a link down below. That link will also give you 10% off whenever you purchase. I'm Seth with Landa House, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.